Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to my channel. It's been a while. I haven't talked to you all, and uh, I do apologize that I did take my channel down. I talked to some people, um, specifically one person, and he said, you know, even if you're not, nobody's paying attention to your videos or you're getting no views, you have, what, 113 subscribers, or I did. I guess you lose them all when you you know, um, <laughs> take your videos all down, but, uh, the thing is, he convinced me to come back, he said, just bring, bring, do you have your videos, I said, yeah, I have them all, I saved every one of them, he said, just re-upload them, put your channel back up, he said, even if they shadow ban you after a while, you know, you, you can always, if nothing else, make another channel, um, I said, yeah, well, I'm moving, so, Wherever I go to, I'll, I'll probably be under a di different IP address, and it may change things, it may not. Um, I don't know if they'll be able to, if when I move to a new address, I'll just use a new channel, and from there, maybe download all of these videos onto another channel with a different IP address, and see if that'll change things. And to all the people who don't know, if you haven't been here before or don't know my story or my channel, um, I just want to say something. Look, uh, you know, <clears throat> a lot of people have lost their moral compass in the world these days, and they think they're righteous, and they think they're right, and really, in reality, they're wrong. And a lot of people are wrong. And... Um, Take, for instance, what happened to me in 1974. In case you don't know, I lived around the corner from George Lucas's cousin. They worked together, and they stole Jedi Knights and the Force from me in 1974. That's three years before Star Wars came out. I'm not going to get into the whole story about that, and you can go watch any of the other 80 videos I have up. <laughs> I don't remember exactly how many there are. There's over 80, I think, uh, but... Um, you know, it, it's the point. You know, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and accuse someone who never did anything to me of doing something to me. If 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 what had if what happened between me and George Lucas and his cousin had not happened, this channel would not even exist in the first place. And so, um, and the man made like uh like uh, like five billion himself made a made and I know CBS Fox made twenty five or. 30 billion and then I, I don't know what Disney made I think they were over 25 billion before they started really flopping bad but um, it, it's the point that you know it, even if they had uh, given me some here let me sorry I'm moving this camera a little bit here even if they had given me something I mean that would be something but at this point first when he took it he knew what I what I thought or where I got it from what I thought that it meant and again I'm talking about the force because when I saw it it was an angel and I asked the other angels and they said he got so powerful from using God's will which was what they called the force so this is what I told him in 1974 on the phone so to me him not ever acknowledging God at all in the movies he never says God never once so um, he's got a lot to answer to f for, for that just that alone much less the fact that he sit and told me on the phone when I was seven years old that he was going to make me rich and famous and left me in the gutter left me in the sewer and I was a very poor kid and again if you haven't seen my videos go back and look I, I grew up poor my parents divorced um, I lived you know, our home was a broken home, and we ended up in a foster home just a year after he took the other night to the force from me. In 1975, I spent almost all of 1975 in a foster home. And now you would think that this man would make billions of dollars and that he would, he would be at least grateful or something a little bit or something and come back and say, you know, Maybe I better do something for that kid. But no, in my whole life, he's never done anything for me. Uh, all he did was took the Jedi Knights in the Force, used it in the movies. And again, if you haven't seen the other videos I have, um, 
Lee Brack and Edmund Hamilton had a force of their own. Um, he, in, in Edmund Hamilton's books, they were married, a married husband and wife, you know, if you don't know this. Um, but they wrote a lot of sci-fi and what they call space opera books from the 1930s all the way until Star Wars. And Edmund Hamilton died the year Star Wars came out. And Lee Brackett died either the year of the release of Empire Strikes Back or the year before. Um, so they both died before Return of the Jedi ever came out. You know what I mean? Before even Empire Strikes Back was released, I think she passed away. So, but they say that she wrote like all the material probably for the first three books. Uh, first three movies, sorry. All the movies you know. The Empire Strikes Back, Star Wars Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Which uh, I heard some people say they didn't really care for Return of the Jedi. I, I kind of liked, liked it, but I didn't like, you know, his father. Uh, to me, I, I thought he should have looked different or something. I, you know, I don't know. And I thought it was cool that he, you know, turned on the Emperor. And that was cool. But um, as far as the movies go... Um, after the first three, I, you know, I didn't care for any of them anyway. The thing is, after I seen The Phantom Menace, all this story started coming out. And it was my mother who was t telling the story about me following this Tinker Toy when I was a kid that really started this whole ball of wax rolling, you know, and where I just remembered what happened back in 1974. So, um, uh, you know, and then coming across a piece of paper, a piece of evidence that was from then. Um, and believe me, I do have things. And let me, here, I'm going to, if I think, I think I can, hold on, give me one second. And I'm going to leave you into the window here for a minute. I'm just going to show you that I do have stuff that was from back when I was a kid. Um, you know, I, not all my stuff. Not all of my stuff got lost. Um, sorry, here I go. I'm back. I got a whole brown paper bag full of stuff from my childhood here. I mean, if you look, this needs to be worked on. But this is something I made in my art class. See, actually, this, this was glued to the page. So it was my silhouette with carpet and just hair. That's... That was just one of our class projects, don't, I didn't make it up, it's just, I followed instructions, so, again, you know, stuff from my childhood, from first grade, you know, you know, huh, stuff I did in 1973 and 74, Close to the same time period. Huh? I only wish I'd written Jedi Knight on some of this. But anyway, it's just the point. Um, that I did have it written on a piece of paper. And it vanished. Uh, as of, I saw it. I had it in my hand in 2000. Come about, my, my mother was just indisposed for a few years. Long story. Um, but it was in storage. Uh, I had a whole document sleeve. My my diplomas, my everything was in. I'm not just making this up, people. This was my stuff from my childhood. My, my vaccination book. We had vaccination books when we were kids because when we went to school, you had to prove that you had your, that you had your polio, your tetanus, your all this other... You know, you had to prove all that stuff to go to school. So we had vaccine booklets. It was almost like a passport thing, right? So, again, I'm not going to get into this real, make this real long video and explain everything because you can go back and see all my other videos. And that piece of paper, though, disappeared, I believe, because it went into storage way out in the country. It wasn't in the city in one of these storage units. Or anything like that it was actually way out in the country on somebody's private property 
and and it, it's crazy that that just vanished my whole sleeve. But my brothers both have a sleeve too, and each one of them have a vaccination book, and everything of theirs is still there. Mine was the only one gone with the piece of evidence I had that said Jedi Knights in the Forest on it from 1974. I'm not making this up. It's real. It exists whether he has it or Disney has it. Somebody probably has it still because I'm sure at this point it's probably be, being used as leverage against someone. And if they just destroy it, they're going to lose their leverage, you see. Because if you go back and you date, you know, date that piece of paper, you know, here's drawings of mine that are not, not as old, you know. Um, so, <clears throat> again, I, and I'm on my third book, but I just, I just wanted you to see something here. And I'll, I'll, I'll pull out another piece of paper here. Let's see if we can find one. It's got a date on it because this was first grade. This was 1973 to 74. So this was first grade. This is that during that same time period. See? Bobby Dang. George Lucas's cousin's thing was Jack. And it says, was Jack playing? And it looks like, does that say Jedi behind it? I wonder if I actually started to write it on here and erased it. Wow, this piece of paper is from 1974. But if you look right here behind Jack, it looks like J-E-D-I. Is that possible? Huh, my teacher corrected that. First grade. Again, I'm not making this story up about Jedi Knight in the Forest. He took it from me when I was when I was seven years old. So it's, it, it's only a matter of time before the world knows the truth. And why would you do that to a seven-year-old kid and then leave him the way he did? Not not ever do anything. That's that's pretty scummy. I, I you know you can take it whatever way you want. But that's George Lucas for you. You you worship this man and you worship Star Wars, but he stole from a seven-year-old kid, man. Se seven-year-old kid, man. That's, that's pretty bad, you know? Um, gee, here's a 1980, uh, 1980 class. This was math, but... You can go through my whole bag and find all kinds of stuff from 1970, 1974, 1974. Some of it my mom got, got on and, and wrote the dates on them so that you couldn't tell. I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to find is actually find something, one of them that has I saw one, that was one of the first ones I pulled out that actually had a date on it. And look at here. This is definitely first grade. First grade. Here's one of my brother's pieces of paper. How that got in my bag, I don't know. David. David. Says David right there. Let's see here. Very good. Looking for almost look like I wrote Jedi. I'll try to write Jedi on this one too. J E. Huh. <laughs> Tell you what, that's anyway. This is a um, all stuff from probably most of this is looks like first grade. To really, be honest, around the same age, around the age I was when uh, 
George uh, robbed me. Huh. I don't know what I was trying to draw here. Some kind of space age looking city. <laughs> oh, look at the car down there. <laughs> oh. But that's just the point. I had this dome city I drew for years, 3,000. It's like a mushroom. There's a city up there above the ground. So imagine that. That was that was 78 or 79. I'm trying to find one that actually has a date on it. Some of these were just first grade, and you could tell um, by the you know the style of writing, the fat pencils, the the, the lines. This was this one was supposed to be for a contest for Sherwin Williams, but I never finished it. Space age rockets. <laughs> anyway, um, anyway, I'm gonna stop here. 1974 was the year that we turned around and moved to West Palm Beach, Florida. When we got down there is when I took um, was when I took um, yeah, and wrote Jedi Knight in the, in the Force on a piece of paper and it was in that document sleeve not in this bag because my mom had stuff that she kept like important documents would go into the document sleeves like our like I said our immunization books our um, I'm trying to see which one of the if any of these have actually have well yeah this one does see they wrote 1973 to 74 that was from first grade one of my first grade we drew we had to draw a picture and then color it in so anyway I think that was supposed to be an umbrella it didn't quite look like an umbrella anyway Now that's a vintage Valentine's card. This is don't, don't keep me hanging, be my Valentine. That's a long time ago. Anyway, um, first grade, first grade. <laughs> George Lucas, man, robbed a seven-year-old kid. Left him, left him poor. I mean, you know, you're talking. That's pretty. Again, that's pretty low down. Um, again, if you knew, knew now as of, like I said, when he took Jedi Knights in the Force, um, and I was seven. He did. That was seventy-four. So he didn't really know it was going to be successful until after seventy-seven. But still, you think by then he would have thought, well, maybe I better go look up that kid and see how he's doing. Never did. Never did. He never did anything. Just took Jedi Knights in the Force, used it. And again, like I said, Lee Brack and them and Hamilton had their own force. I had never heard of them until I saw the video from the Star Killer right on here on YouTube. Um... And that video it was called Did Lee Brackett Go Write Star Wars? That's the first time I ever even... I didn't even know. I heard somebody say something about someone else maybe writing Star Wars years ago. But I don't know who they were talking about. Maybe it's Lee Brackett they were talking about. I, I, I suppose. If it was Lee Brackett they were talking about, um, 
I still have to think that, that, that when he got Jada Knights of the Forest for me, now she had already heard the Force because they had their own version of the Force. But when he came in and told her to put Jedi Knight, he had a bit, she had to been like, where'd you get that from? Because she knew he wasn't that creative, you know? She she had to know him. And, and again, you can go listen to some of his own interviews when he talks to people like, some of his friends, like Francis Ford Coppola, told him he didn't know how to write. He needed to learn to write, and he didn't. He didn't have that creative of imagination. He he had enough of an imagination to put things together, but not how to build them. You know what I'm saying? So he had to steal little, all the little details from everyone else. So, you know, that's pretty sad though that he did that. I mean, as a seven-year-old kid now. Here, you know, that's 50 years ago, dude. 1974 was 50 years ago. This is 2024. So, 50 years he had to come and tell the truth, and he never did. That doesn't, that doesn't speak well about anyone. You know, I don't care who you are. Um, just steal from a seven-year-old kid, leave him in the gutter, never helped him, never did anything for him, never said you're sorry, never asked a question, never even... They had to even, even the guts to call me and say, "Hey, you know, you know, I, I feel bad that I took it, or I, I didn't, you know, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing." You know, that's that's pretty that's pretty low down, man. You know, I, I don't have any respect for Star Wars at all. And after after um, the Phantom Menace came out, and then he called uh, the Force uh, came from these little single-celled organisms called midi-calorians. I lost all respect at that point. I started, well, I, I say I started losing respect. That was either, in, what was that, 98 or 99 that that came out. And then later in 99 was when my mother tried to tell me the story about me falling on the tinker toy. And I said, that's not what happened. I was in that boy's backyard, Jack Hamburger, George's cousin. Same day he got Drew the Jedi Knights in the Force for me is the same day he almost killed me. Again, he almost he pointed a piece of rebar at my face while I was running full blast. If you don't know the story, go back and watch my other videos. Again, this was just for me to come back on here and tell y'all I'm not gone anywhere. I am moving. And just so you know, I'll show you uh, across the living room. Um, you see my shelves are empty. And... There are stacks of boxes where I am packing and moving. So, and I'm moving out. Once I move out, I get somewhere else and I get settled. I don't know where I'm going to end up. What I'm going to get out of my condo is going to be very little to go towards something else because of some bad choices my wife made before she passed away and she was listening to some people she shouldn't have listened to. Um, didn't, I wouldn't have done the same thing she did and you know I, it's the same thing I get from everybody you know to me I, I, to me what she did to me was no different than what George Lucas did to me so it's just another and I'm not a victim you know I don't I don't feel like I'm a victim I don't I don't play the victim mentality because people don't mess with me up close to me you know but people do stab me in the back and that is one of the unfortunate side effects of being a human being is you find out who who the dirty dogs are who will stab you in the back and George Lucas and his cousin Jack Hamburger were just such people you know and um, someone else who was influencing my wife I, I'm not going to mention their name uh, but my wife made bad decisions because she was listening to someone she shouldn't have listened to and sometimes people, I don't know if they're so miserable that they have to, you know, see your life because me and my wife are happy together, you know. And if they see you so happy, uh, maybe their life is miserable and they feel like maybe they need to drag you down and make you miserable like they are. I don't know. But uh, me and my wife were fairly happy uh, until she passed away in 2020. Um, suddenly and uh, I've lost 
now and then we I missed one I had this list of uh, it's 33 on the list but I missed a person uh, my one of my cousin he's technically my step cousin uh, because his dad is married to my aunt uh, but his wife passed away too so as there's technically 34 people who I know who have passed away and uh, four of them were pretty much natural kind of uh, well two cancer my wife died from birth control pills and my best friend killed himself so that those are that's not really natural but it's not uh, something else that caused it so that's all I'm saying about that but uh, anyway I just wanted to make another video let y'all know I'm still around I'm gonna uh, get relocate, relocated probably before I post another video and if any of y'all who were subscribers to my channel come back or you know um, I'll probably be dropping videos again um, when I get moved and we'll keep discussing and again if you have any questions you know I'm not opposed to people asking me questions about what happened in 74 and if you want to know I'll tell you I, anything you want to know I'll tell you but you know I can't I can't make things true that aren't true so when I'm telling you the he, about between me and George Lucas and his cousin happened okay and if I tell you something other than what I've been telling you then I'd be lying so and I'm not a liar so you all take care I'm gonna catch you on the next video and um Please like, share, subscribe to my channel, and I will eventually, hopefully, get a different channel, and we'll be able to get people to view without, you know, that's another thing, because it was kind of disgusting to me that I was getting, posting videos and getting 17 views on them, so that's another reason why I took it down, and then I put it back up again, as, I, as you see. Anyway, I'm going to get off of here. I don't want to stretch this to a half an hour, and I'm pretty close to it right now. You take care of yourselves, and again, um, what I've told you about George Lucas is he's corrupt. He stole from a kid. He didn't care. He still doesn't care. Um, and, and when I look at the world and the shape of the world, he's only just another part of the problem. He's never been part of the solution, uh, no matter what you think of Star Wars. So you take care.